Hello all, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a super exciting tutorial on data frames in Python. Earlier in our previous tutorial, we learned about data frames in R. Today we'll try to cover all that is required for us to understand about data frames in Python. Let us try to first create a basic data frame. Let's try to cover one of the easiest methods of creating a data frame in Python. We have already learned about dictionary in one of our earlier tutorials. So we'll be using dictionary here to create a data frame. Now, before we start anything with respect to data frames or any numerical operations, we have to import two libraries. But here we'll also be importing two other important libraries, which is string and random. I shall come to it in just a bit when we start using some of the functions from these two libraries. All right. Now let's create a data frame. And to create a data frame in Python, we use pd.tat. And if I just click on the tab button, we have data frame here, right? There are other options. Let's select data frame here. And inside the parenthesis, we will be having key value pairs. So we need to have the dictionary format as well. So the curly braces and inside the curly braces. So the first thing that I'll be passing is the name of the column. So let's say I name it as column A. And now I have to pass the values for that column after the colon here. Let me pass a few random numbers. As we have already learned in our previous tutorials, to generate random numbers, we use np.random.randint. And if I need to generate numbers between 1 and 100 and 15 of them, this is how we can generate random numbers. All right. Now let me create another variable, b. And the values that I'll be assigning to it are going to be numbers between thousand and two thousand and once again i'm going to have 15 of them and let me create another variable which is c here i'm going to have a few characters so just like we did in r we are going to generate some random characters from a to z now before i type anything over here let's try a few things in the cell below so we have used the string library here let's see what we can do with the string library string dot and now the very first thing that we see here ascii letters ascii lower ascii upper so supposing i want to extract the lowercase letters so let me just select this you have the entire set a to z here so i just want to pick one of them so if i just do a zero it would give me a similarly if i do one here it would give me b similarly if i enter two it would give me c right so now what I want is among these 26 letters, I want to generate one by one that two randomly. So we can use something called random dot choice. If I just pass it inside random dot choice and if I now execute this, it would give me a now if I execute this again, it would give me some other letter here. And again, if I execute this, it will give me another random character between a and z but now i want to generate 15 of them what i can do here is i can generate a for loop so if i do something like this for i in range 0 to 15 and now here if i just pass it this way and now if i maybe also use a print command here and now execute this i have all these 15 characters executed or generated here there's another way of representing this for loop right so what we can do for that is let me remove the print parameter here and let me remove this as well all right now i can use something called list comprehension i create a variable list comprehension so i will have the square brackets here and inside that square brackets, I would be passing this. This is exactly what I want. Correct. Now, the for loop would be passed later. So it would be like this for or rather, let me just copy this as it is. Control C. 
and a control V here. That's about it. So we are just reversing this thing in the list comprehension. Now, if I just print L and execute this, we are going to have all these 15 randomly generated letters here. All right, there will be some repetition because we are just generating or calling this string dot ASCII lowercase every now and then using the random dot shots. It's very similar to for loop, it's just that we are tweaking this just a bit. So this is a list comprehension and I shall be putting up another tutorial on list comprehension in the upcoming videos. But for now, let's now try to use this exact same code over here for our variable or column C. It's not a variable, it's in fact a column C here. All right, now let me just delete this particular cell and let me execute the cell. But before that, let me also print DF here. Now once I execute the cell, we have three columns, A, B, and C, and there are 15 of them. And here we have the randomly generated characters. This is between 1000 and 2000. All right, cool. Now, just like we have learned about the head and tail operations, in Python, we have to do something like this. Call the variable where we have saved the data frame and then we have to call head. If you don't pass any number inside, it would by default be giving us the five rows from the top. And if I pass a number here, it would give me that many number of records. Similarly, if I do a df.tail, it would be giving me the last five records unless I don't specify a specific number inside. Now, if I want to know what are the various data types of each of these columns, I can use the D types and execute this. So it says A and B are integer and C is an object. Object is nothing but a string data type. So if I want to know a little more about the data frame, I have this function called info, df.info. And once I do that, it would be giving me the details about the various columns. If there were any missing values in this data frame in any of these columns, that would get displayed over here and like we have already seen the data types using df.dtypes we have the dtype here as well all right now if i want to know the shape of the data frame so how many rows and how many columns i can use the df.shape command here and it would give me the number of rows and the number of columns now if i want to add a row supposing i have a list of uh, three elements say uh, two numbers and a string and i want to add that as the 16th row in this data frame which has got 15 rows overall so how can i do that so let me create a list first ls equal to and inside the list let me pass 50 1050 and z and let me just print that list so it has got these three elements now for me to add this to the data frame i need to convert this to a series. So how can I do that in Python? I just have to use the pd dot series and I just have to pass the list variable here. Now if I convert this to a series, it would be like a column, but I want these to be for that particular row, each value having a particular index. So if I just pass index here as a, b, and C. By this, what we're saying is when we have these three elements, 50 will have the index A and 1050 will have the index B and Z will have the index C. So the index would eventually mean it will have the column head or column heading as A and the, the second element will have the column heading as B and the third will have the column heading as C. So maybe once I execute this and try to add this to the data frame or insert this particular row in the data frame, it will be clear. Let me execute this first or let me just print ls first. If you see ls here, ls has got these three elements 50, 1050 and z and it also has the index as a, b and c here. Now this is like row wise. Now we just have to you know tweak this column wise. So how can I append this in the data frame? df dot append and the data frame df i am going to append this list so if i just pass list let's just execute this and see what we're getting so when i execute this i'm getting an error here can only append a series if ignore index equal to true 
All right, so let's try to put the ignore index here. So if I do a shift and tab, you can see that ignore index equal to false by default. So let's change that to true. And now if I execute this, and if I go down to the very bottom, 15 is nothing but the 16th row because indexing in Python starts from zero. And here we have the 16th row inserted. But of course, the data frame is still not having the 16th element because we have not updated the data frame. And if you have to update the data frame, we have to once again assign it back to the data frame. All right. And now if I execute this, it will have all those elements. So we can just confirm that by checking the df dot shape. So it now has 16 rows and the three columns. If you now have to insert a column, it's very simple. We don't have to have a list as such. We can just create another column just by passing new name to that column inside the square bracket. Say, no, I have to create a column D here. So I'll be passing the new column name inside the square brackets of this data frame. And here, now remember, we have 16 rows here. So I need to pass 16 elements here. Let's say once again, I'm passing some random numbers, np dot random dot rand end and I'm passing numbers from say 10,000 to 20,000 and I'm passing 16 of them this time and let me just print df as well at the same time so here if you see d has also got inserted as a column and we've got overall 16 of them if you just want to find out the names of the columns of course here we just have four of them but if there are quite a few of them you can just use df dot columns and it will give us the names of all the columns that are present in the current data frame. And if we just have to do a indexing, if you just want a specific columns to be displayed. So we have to use a double square bracket here and I'm passing say the zeroth index or the zeroth column and the second column. So which means column A and column C. Now if I execute this. Uh, it will throw an error. So here, if you see, none of int index 0 to did are in the columns and we have not specified the dot lock, dot loc. So what does dot loc mean? Let's try to use the dot loc and see what exactly it would give. So if I now put a dot loc here, let me execute this. So when I put the dot loc here, and when I pass 0 and 2, what is happening is it is actually thinking that I'm looking for the 0th index and the second index of the rows. But in fact, I'm looking for the 0th and the second index of the column. So to do that, what I have to do is I need to pass the I log function here. And I have to tell Python that I need all the rows. And I just need these two specific columns. So for specifying that I need all the rows, we have to put a colon here before the comma. In R, we had to just leave it blank. But in the case of Python, we have to put a colon. So this means that I need all the rows. And after the comma, if I need more than one element, then I have to pass it again inside the square bracket. So I'm passing inside the square bracket 0 and 2, which means I want A and C. So if I execute this now, now I have all the records and just A and C columns. However, if I just want specific rows here, say I want 0, 2, 3 and 4. So it would just give me 0, 2, 3 and 4 indices of the row. Now if I execute this, I'm sorry, I need to remove this colon here. And now once I execute this, it would now give me 0, 2, 3 and 4. So anything before the comma would be the row and anything after the comma would be the column. All right. Now, I don't have to specifically pass 0 and 2 if I don't know if there are hundreds of columns. I cannot count what is the column number for, say, a particular column. I can pass the column as it is. So I can use the dot look as it is and instead of 0 and 2, I can even specifically mention that I need A and I need C. So I means integer. So whenever I pass I log, I have to pass only integers or numbers inside for rows and columns. But the moment I pass log, I can pass 
any column name here. So it would be the name of the column. So now in this case, I have passed log and I'm passing A and C. Once I execute this, it gives me the same result. Now, supposing I want to change the names of the columns here, how can I do that? I can just pass df.columns and I can just pass it in the list. Say I want to change it to capital A, capital B. I need to pass this inside the quotes cap B, okay, and cap C and cap D. And, and now if I execute df.head, once I do this, it will now have the heading as cap A, cap B, cap C and cap D. All right, but supposing I don't want to rename all the columns, I just want to rename two columns here. Supposing I just want to rename column A and column C. Once again, I'll be using the dictionary for changing the column names. So how can I do that? If I just type df dot and I click on the tab button here and if you see here something called rename, I use this rename parameter and inside the brackets, I have quite a few options here. So here I want to change the columns. So I'd be using columns equal to and now inside the curly braces which is the dictionary for us i have to pass the old column name which i want to change which is say cap a exactly as it is and after the column i have to pass the new column name which i want to change it to so cap a has to be renamed as just a similarly after the comma cap c has to be renamed as capital c all right now once i execute this we have A and C. So cap A and cap C have now been replaced by A and C. However, if I print DF again, names still remain the same. Cap A, cap B, cap C and cap D. So what happened? We did try to rename it, but it has not got updated. So how can we update that? Well, we have another parameter here. If I put a comma here and now if I click the shift tab, there is something called in place. By default, it is false. So if I just change it to in place equal to true, which means whatever updations I've done here, that has to be in place. That has to get reflected and updated in the DF variable. So that is what in place equal to true indicates. All right, now let me just execute this. So then it will not display any output. It will just get updated here. Now, if I execute this df all over again, it now has the new names a and c. The others are as is cap, cap b and cap t. So this is how we have an option of either renaming just a specific set of columns or we can update all the columns at the same time. All right, now let's try to learn something about filtering. Say we have df. If I want to filter only those records where say column a is greater than 70. So how can I do that? So I go to df, capital A, isn't it? Capital A, right? Yeah, capital A. So let me just print this. So it has given me all these numbers, right? Now I want all the values greater than 70. So once I execute this, wherever or whichever rows are greater than 70 will have true, everything else will be false. So looks like only there are two rows where we have true. Now, what I have to do is I have to pass this condition inside the square bracket. So what should I be doing here? I pass DF and inside the square bracket, I need to pass this condition here. So DF A greater than 70. So this is the row that I'm referring to, which means I have to put a comma here and I have to put a colon here indicating all the columns. I want only those rows where the column A has values greater than 70, but display all the columns for me, which is why we have this colon here, nothing to the left of the colon and nothing to the right of the colon. But when we are passing or when we want to display the row and column, we have to pass the dot LOC operator here as well, right? So once I execute this now, it would now give me only those rows where 
the column A has values greater than 70. Of course, I can also put multiple conditions here. For example, if I also say and df, so I want to ensure that column C has the value as M, which means I just want to display all records where A is greater than 70, which means these two records, but the condition is the column C should have the value as M. I need to have a double equal to here. So effectively, it should only be displaying this particular record, only one record, not the second one. But just to ensure Python doesn't get confused, it's always good to have the brackets correctly placed so that it understands what we are asking Python. All right. And we have a comma here and then we have a colon here. Right. So just putting spaces so that, you know, we also understand what we are trying to do here. Right now, let me execute this. So now it is only displaying me one record where both the conditions are met. If I want to save this data frame to a CSV file, if I just type two, I can see a two underscore CSV option here. And now inside the bracket, what should I be passing? First of all, I have to pass the path. That is what name should I give to the data frame that I'm safe. So let me just pass it in the code data frame dot csv and there's another thing that i need to do but let's just save this first of all so once i click on the shift plus enter button looks like it has got saved because it did not give me any error where can i check this particular data frame so let me go back here and if we just scroll down you can see data frame dot csv got stored just a few seconds back Right, but the problem with the data frame is if I just click on this data frame, it is displaying the index 0, 1, 2, 3 are nothing but the index. Now, if we don't want this index, what we can do here is while saving it, we need to pass another option, which is here by default index is true. So we need to change the index to false index equal to false. Now, once I execute this again and let me go back here and check data frame. Now, if you see that 0, 1, 2, 3 is no longer appearing, so that index has also disappeared. It just has the column names and all the records there. So this is how we store a data frame. If I want to read this file again into my Jupyter notebook, how can I do that? Let me use a temp variable here, the emp pd dot read underscore csv since this is a csv file we use the read underscore csv and here i have to pass the name as it is data frame dot csv all right and now if i just also print the head of temp it would give me the exact data frame that we just now saved as a csv and it is now displaying all the five rows from the top of this data frame. So these are some of the most frequently used operations with respect to data frames in Python. Of course, if you want to practice a little more with respect to data frames, there are quite a few freely available data sets in Python as well, just like we had in R. But here we have to import a particular library by data set. How do I do that? And then if I just type data brackets and if i click on the enter button shift plus enter these are all the data set names that are available and it also gives us the description of what these data sets have in it so bod biochemical oxygen demand cake breakage angle of chocolate cakes there are quite a few of them which we can use for our own study purposes but here if you see there are around 757 rows and two columns so 757 rows and just two columns. If you see, there is a dot 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 appearing in between. So if you want to ensure that we see all these names without these dot dot dot, we need to change some parameters. So we have to change the option of displaying the maximum rows this way. PD dot set underscore option and inside the bracket, we have to pass display dot max rows and say we want to display all the rows so since we have 
756 of them if I just type 800 here for example and now if I pass data again and execute this it would now give me all the details so there is no dot dot it will in fact give me all the records that are available in python and now if i want to open one of these data sets for example let me just randomly pick one of them planets i need to pass it inside the bracket in this way p l a n e t s right planets and now if i just execute this it would give me the details that i have in this particular data set and to make it better let me just pass it as df2 equal to data planets and then if i just type df2 dot head it would give me the details of this particular planet of this particular data set planets so once i do this i now get to see the top five rows of this particular data set planets so please do explore little more about these data sets that we have and try to see if you can do a little more operations data frame operations that we have learned in this tutorial so that you get a better hang of it all right i hope i have covered the most important operations of data frame just in case you feel that i have missed out on any of these parameters or any of these operations in data frame that are quite frequently used which i have not covered do post it in the comment section so that i can take that up in my upcoming tutorials all right I hope you like my tutorial. If you have any doubts, questions, suggestions, feedback, please do post them in the comment section. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.